All right, so what I want to do is I want to compare and contrast these two functions right here. And the best way that I can think of doing that to start off with is just to put it into your calculator. Okay, I'm going to graph this. I like to start with Zoom 6 always, that standard window. Um, so if you're in your Y equals under F2 are all your Zoom features. And Zoom 6 is still your standard window. All right, now I put two equations into y equals, but I'm only seeing one graph. They're the same. Exactly the same? How are they going to differ? Good. One of them has a hole. You're a step ahead of me. Um, and the reason for that is that if we go back to our notes, and if you were to factor this, this is going to factor into x plus 1, x minus 1 on top. And then the x minus 1's cancel. So f of x really just equals x plus 1, except that x cannot equal what? 1, right. Because with the original problem before I canceled, 1 would make the denominator equal to 0. So the functions are very similar, but f of x has a hole in it. All right, so let's take the same, fun, or f of x was x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. I want to take the limit as x approaches 1. Yesterday, we just immediately started plugging numbers in. Well, if you do that, you're going to get 0 over 0. And we've already factored it up top, so we know that that's the same thing as the limit as x approaches 1 of just x plus 1. And what will that limit be? So the limit is basically telling me the location of that hole. So what's the y value of that hole? Two. Two. Good. All right, number 10 looks pretty similar, but now when I plug in x equals 1, I still get a 0 on the bottom, but what do I get on top? Two. Two. That is not an indeterminate form. Indeterminate is just 0 divided by 0. Plus, can I factor x squared plus 1? No. So 2 divided by 0, what do you think that tells me about the limit? Very good. It does not exist. All right, so some functions obviously don't have limits because they fail to exist. And we talked yesterday about the three main reasons why we wouldn't have a limit that exists. And you can tell ahead of time if the manip manipulating the equation will allow you to find its limit. If direct substitution yields 0 over 0, that's called indeterminate form, and that means that the limit exists, but it's in a form where you can't t see it right then. So you're going to have to do some manipulate it. All right, so for example, on number 11, this is x approaches negative 3. So if I plug in a negative 3 for x, I'm going to get 9 minus 3 minus 6 over 0, which is 0 over 0. So that means that I should be able to factor and find a limit. And the top will factor into x plus 3, x minus 2. Yes. This is the one where even when you're factoring, you still have to write limit. You basically have to write limit as x approaches 0 until you actually find the limit or find the answer. Okay. Okay, so the x plus 3 is canceled. So when we plug in a negative 3, we get negative 5. Okay, look at number 12. Try that one on your own. definitely get zero on the bottom when you use direct substitution, but the big question is, is did you get zero on the top? You get 30 over zero, which means the limit does not exist. 
Okay, we're going to use the table feature of your calculator to evaluate each limit. Unfortunately, you have to hit a second function key to get sine divided by 5x. Now make sure that the 5x is in parentheses on the bottom. Because if you don't put parentheses around the 5x, it will do sine of x divided by 5 and then multiply that by x. And we're interested in the limit as x approaches 0, so I want to go to my table set, which is, no, diamond F4. Start the table at 0, and you want your delta table to be something small, 0 0.01 or 0 0.001. You always have to hit enter to save it. You can't just hit escape. Okay, so the value of the function is undefined at x equals 0, but my best guess as to what the limit would be is 0.2. Good. I just want to make sure that you can read the table on your calculator. Right, so it means that there's a hole on the graph, but the y value of that hole is 0.2, and therefore the y values that that graph is approaching, or the limit as x approaches 0, is 0.2. Properties of limits. All right, we're going to let A, let B and C be real numbers, and those are just the values that X is approaching. And N is some positive integer, and F and G are functions. So the limit as X approaches, I can't read that up there, C of F of X equals L, and the limit as X approaches C of G of X equals K. All right, so if I wanted to take the limit as x approaches c of the function f of x times some number b, then that's just going to equal b times the limit of f of x. Well, what did, what did it say the limit of f of x was? L, L right. And we'll do this with actual numbers in just a second, so you'll get a better idea. All right, if you want to take the limit of the sum or the difference of functions, it's the same thing as finding the limits first and taking the sum or difference of the limits. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x plus or minus g of x would just be L plus or minus k. So it doesn't matter, matter whether you add the functions first and then take the limit or take the two limits and then add the limits together. All right, what do you think the product of the limit of fg is going to be? Okay. And, all right, and then a power, if you want to take the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the n power, then you could take the limit first, which is l, and raise it to the nth power. All right, I don't believe that we talked about this last year, but a composition of functions. A composition of two functions is like f of g of x or g of f of x. That should be fairly familiar to you. So if you want to take the limit as x approaches c of f of g of x, it's actually like taking the limit of the inner function and then taking f of that number. Okay, so... In the brackets right here, the limit as x approaches c of g of x is k. So this would be the same thing as f of k. Okay, limit as x approaches c of f of x is 9 and g of x equals negative 2. So what would the limit as x approaches c of 4 times f of x be? 36. Right, very intuitive. Limit as x approaches c of f of x plus g of x? 7. All right, here's a little review of exponents. We are going to be taking 9 to the negative 3 halves power, right? Which one is the root and which one is the power? The root is 2, right? The root is on the bottom because like a tree, its roots are on the bottom. So that means take the square root of 9, which is... 3 to the negative 3 power, 1 over 27. Good. Okay, now 16 is that composition of function 1s. You've got two different options. If I want to find the limit as x approaches um, 3 of f of g of x, 
the first thing I could do is I could find f of g of x. But in order to find f of g of x, don't I have to take g of x and plug it in everywhere that I see an x? Does anybody want to do that and simplify it? No. We don't want to do that. So what we want to do is we want to use the formula and say, well, then that's the same thing as, as f of the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. All right, so the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is what? 5. So therefore, f of 5 is... 3 times 25 minus 10 plus 5, 70. Okay, that's a good question. How do you know that the f function is continuous? Any polynomial function is always continuous. So that's a polynomial function, so you know it's continuous. So I kind of started with an easier example, but that's a good question. Okay, so this is considered a composition of functions here on 17 and 18 because sine is one function and then f of x is another function. So the limit as x approaches 1 of the sine of f of x would be the same thing as the sine of the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. And the graph is f of x. So what's the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x? 3. So I would be looking for the sine of 3. Now, in calculus, you're more than welcome to just leave the exact answer. That's called an exact answer because we didn't have to round or anything. Or if you do round, you have to make sure that you're rounding accurate to three decimal places. So you can either leave your answer as the sine of 3, or you could go to your calculator and find that decimal approximation, um, which if you really wanted to find that decimal approximation is now remember that this calculator gives you exact answers. So if it spits back exactly what you typed in, does anybody remember from last year what you need to hit in order to get the, de the decimal? Right, diamond and enter. So the decimal approximation for the sine of 3 is 0 0.141. Okay, for 18, this would be the same thing as the natural log of the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. And what's the limit as x approaches 2? Two? 2. So because I'm lazy, I'm just going to leave it as the natural log of 2. I don't really care what that decimal approximation is. You know, an easy way to remember it is you're just kind of flip-flopping the limit and that outer function, and then work from the inside out. 